Hey, 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 welcome back to the Virgo channel. My name is Laura. I'm going to do a general message for Virgo. Now that energy is fluid, you know the deal. Just interpret the message as it best resonates with you. Now, if you're new to the channel, anything of any importance or relevance to the channel, you find in the description box. You'll also soon realize that I don't just look at what goes on on the surface. We do look at the spiritual blocks, the shadows, and see how they play out as karmic themes within your experience, along with everything else. If you want to enter into winning a free reading with me, you got to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and write the word of the video in your comment bar. I have chosen a few people. However, I have not gotten a response back from a few. So if I don't hear back by the middle of next week, well, I'm going to start choosing other people. And you will have to um, play again in order to, you know, enter to, you'll have to enter again in order to win a reading. All right. I'm trying to do readings every day live for uh, people that have subscribed to the channel as a way of saying thank you. And also to a lot of times the readings, they, um, they're not just for the person that wins the reading, but actually for anyone that resonates within the reading. So, you know, we learn. We learn, we learn through other people's experiences. We create empathy as well because we, and, and we actually feel as if we're not so different. A lot of times um, when we are in the bad relationships or we've had a lot of spiritual blocks, we tend to judge other people against ourselves and then we don't like what we see within ourselves so when you're able to see that someone else has gone through the same exact experiences and they had similar blocks and they have sabotaged themselves you know it's it really makes us feel as if we're not alone makes us feel that you know that we're not so different and that you know, we can learn just like we can watch someone else learn. We can watch someone else heal. We too can heal and learn and inspire. And I'm kind of feeling like, Virgo, you inspire someone. I don't know. That was just an intuitive hit that I just got. Like you're connected to somebody that misjudged you. I feel like they didn't understand your humbleness. They didn't understand that you're unique and it takes confidence to be unique. It takes um, moxie to be unique. And sometimes moxie creates waves. And I feel like it's always the people of a lower consciousness that get triggered by someone's moxie and uniqueness because they actually need that medicine. That's why they get triggered. So I feel like you're connected to someone that listened to stupid people, you know, and they're actually looking at the people that they listen to and they're like, who was I listening to? Why was I listening to these people? But your person was afraid to get close to you. So, you know, they're not emotionally intelligent. They were really afraid to get emotionally attached because they could feel the connection and they wanted to. And so they literally tried to control not and then listen to other people, but those people were jealous. So I feel like this is the underlining energy and I'm going to see why. Now, if you want to enter into winning a free reading with me, like the video, subscribe to the channel, write the word of the video in your comment bar. And no, I'm going to pull a bunch of different cards to see why I just handled that. What And what can we build on that scenario that nugget uh look at this perfectionism perfectionism see i feel like you're connected to someone that actually thinks that you're perfect puts you on a pedestal because they see you a lot different but they hold a lot of shame so they're someone that oh really cares about what other people think they really care about how people perceive them so they're um this is why they ask a lot of other people's opinions because they're not coming from their true selves. And I think that this person sees you don't ask for anyone's permission. You have moxie. You do what you want. You do create waves. However, 
people respect you because you're really who you are and that in your authenticity, um, you've attracted and made a nice life for yourself is what this person perceives. And so the, in a way, this, you know, your, how they perceive you triggers their insecurities. Which is another reason why I feel like this person tends to like hold back. It's not just, I didn't treat you well, but then on top of it, I don't even know how to approach you. They overthink. And that creates overstimulation, which means that this person doesn't do anything. Because when a person's overstimulated, it means they're getting too much thoughts, too much emotions, and it like literally shorts them out. I feel like you and this person have that in common. Maybe not about thinking about each other in that way. However, that when you get nervous, when there's something that you really desire and want, it can create a lot of overstimulation to a sense of feeling like you can't have it. So I'm kind of feeling like you both grew up um, with parents that kind of made you feel not good enough, ashamed. I don't see why I pulled that. Um, anxiety, like I said, this person has a lot of anxiety and worry. That's why they don't know really how to approach you. And I also feel like... <sighs> Sometimes this person wants to, like, I feel like they, I can actually feel them and see them, like, practicing in the mirror how they would, go, what they would say or how they would approach you. Um, and in it, they just, again, they don't like who they are, so they never like how it comes out. You know, trying to plan beforehand strategize and in that they they're never coming from their true self someone that comes from their true self comes from the spirit part of self the god part of self which is unconditional love and that only happens in the now only in the now do we get divine guidance of what to say and we are not i feel like this person from moment to moment feels differently because their thoughts are all over the place about you and then mainly it's because it triggers their insecurity, but they have feelings and they also know that they didn't treat you well. So there's an array of different emotions, not to mention they're not 100% healed. So their ego also gets in there from time to time. And that's that self-righteous person that hides behind the persona of who they have shown you that they are, but that's not really who they are. I feel like this person's really soft in the middle. I want to tell you how I feel. Again, like I said, I feel like we had tended to, you know, put on a persona because they don't like who they are. So they wanted you to perceive that they, you know, were confident. But in that, um, I feel like this person is not evolved. And they were raised by a person or were around a person when they were younger that they admired. And, but that person that they admired needed healing because it's like, instead of teaching them through love, it's like this person like acted very arrogant towards them. Like, yeah, like I can have anything and my time, you know, you're not really worth my time. And, you know, look at everything that I own, look at everything that I've obtained, you know, this is who I am. And again, they also had bad habits. And so your person has like adopted like this persona like of that because they thought that that was um, what people thought was desirable. That was what would make them appear to be more successful than they really were. They wanted you to associate with that and not really who they truly are. And so being that they, again, they, they have so much anxiety and worry, I feel, about losing you because they didn't really think that um, you were going to respond the way that you responded. I feel like they expected you to um, at least want to talk about the relationship, at least, like, want to get closer to them. And I feel like there was always a want and desire on both sides. But because this person never showed you anything, you were very conscious to not show this person anything. 
And I feel like they played a few games to try and get you to do things, but you never really did them. And that's not uncommon for um, people that have spiritual blocks. They always act like they don't care. But the thing is, you can feel that they care. But so their way is to make themselves appear as if they're better. But in that, what they're actually doing is they're ignoring you. They're insulting you. They're, again, and I feel like now this person sees that. They didn't see it when they were in that phase because anxiety. And anxiety makes a person react the same way that they reacted when the original fear or trauma had hit. So this person has always felt insecure around people that they really care about. It actually works for them to be with people that they don't really care about. And it's because they feel that they don't lose themselves in the connection. They feel as if they're not manipulated by their emotions in the relationship. And the irony is I feel like you're, you may be someone that's like, hey, you feel that way. You're the person that manipulates. You're the person that does all that. I feel that from a lot of you Virgos. Yes, because this person sees what they look for. So it's almost like the trained behaviorism is I'm going to do it to you before you do it to me. And it's not, it's, it's, it's because this person's coming from their wound. They're not coming from their true self, their higher self. And that's what happens when you don't heal the trauma. You may say, oh, I know exactly what it is that I do, but I don't know how to fix it. And this person needs to learn how to fix it. They continually, um, like I said, get, in, get overstimulated when they really, really, really want something. And then in that, it's like, because there's a sense of, I can't really have that. So I get in my own way. And how do I get in my own way? I come from this fake persona and I actually, I'm really nasty and abusive and toxic to the person that I like, because I always associated that type of behavior with powerful, just the same as a lot of times that we can associate um, like anxiety and fear with rage it's like well that person looks angry it's like no that's anxiety and it's because again there it's it looks the same well this person got confused with those two emotions they're not emotionally intelligent i feel like this person wasn't allowed to be sensitive they weren't allowed to have their own unique process see highly sensitive people they take on a lot of information and and they're very intuitive so it, the process seems slower, but they're actually more thorough. They're more thorough because they look at things from every angle. They're taking in all the information. However, if you brought up with someone that's like, like, hurry up, be this way, be smart, be, don't show emotion. Like what's taking you so long? Act with authority, act like a man, act like a woman, boss up. You know, if you're being told that, then you're trying and you're continually trying to um, to emulate someone else. You're not becoming who you're supposed to be. You're actually thinking over time that the way that you are, that there's something wrong with. And I feel like you both have this in common as well. Um, you don't know how hard it was to let you go. Again, I can't let you get close to me. I can't let you get close to me. I wanted you to reassure me. But again, the way that they needed to, for you to reassure them was for them to be soft. And they were hard. Because again, they were almost like demanding of it in a way of, I'm going to keep giving you less. I'm going to keep emotionally manipulating you till you get it. And it's almost like they handled you the way um, a parent handled them. It's like it went into that, like almost like trained behavior. And I feel like they tend to not have this problem when they are in relationships with other people that they don't, they don't have the depth of emotion for. 
I feel like they've never had this type of connection, but in them, this connection, it's made them want to control. And so we know that they're always coming from a place of fear. So again, they don't want to let you get close to that. I don't want you to see everything. You're not going to like it. I want you to think I'm perfect. Like I don't have any problems because then I'm desirable. Otherwise, who I am, I'm not good enough. I will wait for a sign from you, but it's again, and they waited for a sign from you, meaning that they were hoping that you were going to come back. They were hoping, and I feel like they, people that don't know their worth play this game, you know, um, people that, you know, are not going to be able to lay any boundaries down do this. Again, because they're so caught up in wanting them to like them, but they hold back, you know, like that's, that's their um, way of, of navigating the relationship with a person that they really like. As I said, I don't really feel like they had a lot of people that they had the depth of this connection for. That's why, like you said, it brings me to a place like this is something that happened in childhood. This is something where this person is like, I always need to be seen as the leader on top. I always need to lead with my ego. I always need to be strategic. I always need to be outsmart. I always need to be this person because again, a parent made them feel that way. So yeah, they attracted people that they might've been attracted to, but they never had the spiritual connection. It looked good on paper, you know, but they never had that emotional connection. This person isn't allowed to feel, and here it is, you come along and you, they have feelings for you. The depth of this connection actually makes this supposedly secure person, the person that acted really confident, again, or thought they were confident, I should say, has made that ego crumble where this, they're looking at themselves as if they're not confident. And that's what's overstimulating them. So that's why they can't reach out to you. I'm not gonna reach out to you. I'm actually gonna change decks to see if we can go any deeper. Because we see what they did. It's like, they, they never really allowed the relationship to go anywhere because it, from day one it's like they had the connection with you so from day one they tried to look perfect what's this i'm tired of being away from you physically i'm trying to process my fears so i can come back to you so again there's a sense of your spiritual connection so they can't control it Let's just face it. It's like there's something that's much grander than what we see in the physical world, right? There's a bigger purpose to why we're here. And a lot of times it doesn't logically make sense. So this person is not going to get it because they are not spiritual. Again, they strategize. They are very logical, linear. There's someone that has been taught that way they've been conditioned that way they have become not really their true self but a version of themselves however they're still the true self which is a god part of self again because god says well i live inside of everybody and you know that's i'm unconditional love you know i'm just the energy of unconditional love and you know that's still there and there's a the bigger purpose of why we're here and we're down here in physical form to learn that we're not separate from unconditional love, which is God, which is the energy of the universe, which means that we're all connected to each other, regardless of race, creed, religion, gender, or any of it. We're all connected through this life force, this energy of unconditional love. However, your person has again cut themselves off from unconditional love, meaning they've tried to control it. Their ego has gotten in the way because of layers and layers and layers of bad experiences from not coming from their true self, but always coming from 
this persona, which has made them always want to control their relationships because they still want love. They just don't believe that they're deserving of love. They believe that they have to be someone else in order to obtain it because they feel that there's something wrong with them because every time they would really have a deep meaning connection and it doesn't even mean like just with doesn't mean it's just a person that they like like uh, uh in in a in a sexual connection or an intimate connection like that but as like a friendship right like a friendship someone that they really like really cared for that they let them in and th that they'd have to be vulnerable for and they have a hard time differentiating whose energy is whose and that's a highly sensitive person that grew up in an environment where they were conditioned to again like to get their love by pleasing so again here you come along and they actually have an emotional connection that never happens so of course they don't want to you to get that close to them because down deep inside they don't really know who they are they don't like who they are they are this persona and here you are you're someone that's a truth speaker you're someone that has moxie you're someone that's gonna like pull off that ego and be like who's behind this sheet almost like you know scooby-doo who's that masked man like who keeps sabotaging you rip the sheet off and it's like oh this person's doing it to themselves they're the ones underneath the sheet it's like because they don't really like who they are and so again it, you would do that to them and so there's a sense of, I can't let you get that close to me. But now what we're seeing is, I don't fucking care whether you see it or not, because it's difficult to be awake from you. Like, I can't control this situation. And God says, of course you can't control it. You can't control me. Like, you're just down there to learn that you're an expression of me but right now you're not an expression of me you're an expression of again what you think people will love because you don't like who you are because you don't know who you are because you aren't allowed to have a unique unfoldment process so you're living from a persona and that's never going to last that long because people are always going to see it this person actually feels that they can be themselves around you and that's like oh my god that's scary because uh who am i then who do i want to be then you know it's like oh what if i don't like that person what if it's people are going to perceive it to be who cares my ego is fragile to criticism and rejection i've created walls to protect myself and that's what i'm saying that's the fear you're not going to like me when you really see who I am. So the ego is the personas of me. But in that, no one could ever get really that close. So again, it's because I don't really believe that I love myself. I, I don't believe I don't believe anyone can love me because I don't love myself. Because I was taught that at a young age. That's this person. I've hurt you and I'm sorry. I hope you can forgive me someday and understand I was reacting in fear. Again, that you're not going to love me. I'm only going to like see abandonment again. I know that, but this person acted badly, I feel like, because of it. But again, scared can sometimes look like anger, can be really vicious. I'm not going to give into fear. I know fear is only an illusion. So this person is really fighting themselves. They're like really processing because you're seeing this twice. Like, wait a minute. It's like, I'm coming from this part of myself. And I'm stupid. I'm like letting go of a person that I care about because I'm afraid that they're not going to like me, but they already showed me that they liked me. So it's again, so this is kind of me, but so why is it? So it's making them dive deep with inside of themselves. And again, remember there are layers, layers. I am walking home to you. I'm not sure where I am. 
on the path, but I am walking it. Like I said, and that's what I kept saying all through this relationship. But it's almost like we had a similar one a few weeks ago, right? Of a person that was like, nope, I don't want this relationship. Because you can't really see who I am. But then it's like, oh, it's like, but I can't fight it. I can't fight it. So I feel like there can, because we got this reading a few weeks ago, a very similar one. Anyway, I feel like we're tapping into a person that continues to go through cycles like this, meaning they're like, no, I can hold back. No, I don't want this. And then they're like, they have a weak moment and they make some changes and they get far enough. But then I feel like people in their environment, situations happen that challenge this person because that's what happens when you're on the path to change. Um, you're always going to um, be confronted with challenges, right? Because no one's going to give you greatness. You got to get up and take it. If you want change because you're not happy with your life, and this person's not happy with their life, no one's happy coming from a persona and not letting anyone in and never experiencing love. That's why we're down here. So you can maybe say, no, 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 I've learned to control it. Well, you can learn to control it, but guess what? You're still going out there then and having extremely addictive behavior and getting counterfeit love, whether that's through alcohol, drugs, people, or some reckless behavior that's going to be your downfall, which is exactly what I feel like your person has done in the past. And so there's certain people that are around your person also that have a lot of power because they don't let people in. So anyone that they're consistently seeing, again, they're still a highly sensitive person. They've just learned to control it. So we have to say, why did you attract this person into your life? Flow, water. We know what that's about. It's about our emotions and learning how to go with the flow. Sometimes our own emotions get stuck. And I feel like this person... Uh, like I said, in the beginning, it doesn't matter that they're wounded. They still hurt you coming in and not letting you get close. And even though they were wounded, reacting to, to their own pain because their pain gets triggered because you're someone that they have feelings for, so they can't control the relationship. So they're going to actually do things to degrade you, to make you feel bad, to play all these games and then it's like, obviously, um, having a person like that in our life makes it difficult to go with the flow of life. So I could feel like maybe you were brought up by a parent or lived in an environment where it was extremely difficult to learn how to go with the flow. But I feel like you're a highly sensitive person. So you're like, I can pretty much mold to anything. Um, so it could be a gift as well as like, a gift that you had to utilize to get through this. Um, lies and secrecy. So again, going with the flow of, again, of whatever is in balance you had to live through. And again, a lie could be that you had an alcoholic parent, that life wasn't really as pretty as it looked from the outside, that the secrets of the ancestral karma is what, we hide and flow again is that second chakra which is our unique individuality it's who we perceive we are when we look in the mirror and this person says i don't like who i am so i'm not going to go with the flow i'm going to control because i'm in fear of my lack and the lack due to lies and secrecy it's like again i have had to hide that i was told that that's not a good part of me and really again what you were hiding was your parents dysfunction because we're all uniquely different we all may have the same organs and all breathe and all have to go to the bathroom and and eat in order to sustain life but our own identity and your sensitivity is part of 
your identity, whether you like it or not. You mean that I don't like that part of myself because I get overstimulated and it makes me feel inadequate. And that's what this person was told. Control it, control it. It's embarrassing. Get it together instead mm -hmm. of take a deep breath in, reset your nervous system, get in the moment, get in the now, only in the now do you get divine guidance. Be gentle with the person. Allow them their unique unfolding process to find themselves. So this is where somebody interfered with that but at a very young age. I have to hide that from everyone. Isolation. So you could have, again, grown up in the same exact thing. Well, my sensitivity and it didn't make me feel good. So I didn't really go out and play. I kind of kept to myself. It's like, or I like to, to, to stay by myself or I don't want, didn't feel supported when I went through difficult times. So the way that I healed was in isolation because I'm not really allowed to have my process. Once again, I feel like this is the common wound that you and this person have. Again, water. Water is all about your identity. Being able to go with the flow of life, we can only do that through the passions of life. That's why that chakra is where the uh, the um, birthing, right? It's our sexual chakra. It's, it's uh, and when we have blocks in that, it's, Again, mainly because of our identity, who we perceive that we are. So this person is on their way back, and this is a general reading. So some of you guys are going to take this person back, and some of you guys are not. But we know that it's karmic, right? So karmic relationships are not yes or no. You're not right, yes or no. You can only avoid karmic situations by shape shifting them meaning like you'll always learn from being in a karmic relationship only sometimes you'll learn through pain and other times you learn through oh wow that actually worked out i actually see a different version of myself karmic means that and if it's a past life that comes back into this life well they found you in this life because they love you that much so that's why they're coming back. And that's why when you feel like home and they don't have any control over it and you don't have any control over it and you're like, I, I don't even know why I like this person there again. And the reason why is because it's divine. It's teaching you. So that means that there is an opportunity to do things correctly. And what we see is that this person actually sees you almost like a muse. Like, oh, there's a different way to live. You know, well, like, I thought that my life was okay. But, you know, even though I, I've had bumps in the road, but, you know, living by my facade and having people, again, surface relationships, I can fill my day with it. And it's okay until they met you. So we have to ask a spirit, for those of you that want to be with this person, inner beauty, I open my eyes of my heart and direct my gaze on the light within every being. Personally and physically appear are in the image of man. Beauty and goodness are in the image of God. So again, it's to realize that you're learning, like you're attracted to this person because there is love, right? You see their inner beauty. You see their the divinity inside of themselves. That's why you're attracted to this person. But they are teaching you. Like you said, so it's always to um to focus on that part of them and realizing that that's what you're striving for. That's why this person came into your life. So they're not going to be perfect, the same as you're not going to be perfect. Um, we all have wounds. You might be like, well, my wounds don't look like that. And then spirit will say, it's again, well, you may have different gifts again, but nevertheless, just by your essence and your being, you're showing this person how to be. And if you're devil's advocate, I'm just going to pull three. I don't know why I'm called to do this. Um, we'll see. Um, 
I find you incredibly attractive. Because I'm like, um, and I feel like this person thinks that you're beautiful inside and out. Then you made the impression on them. And then um, jealousy and possessiveness. So again, this person knows, again, that they care a lot about you. Because, again, they do have a tendency to be jealous and possessive, which is why they um, didn't want to get close to you. Because that's when you don't allow your feelings and process your feelings um, and you're not allowing this person to get close to you. Well, obviously, you're going to get your love and attention from other places. And so I feel like part of the reason why this person is coming back is because they're jealous, you know, like you're going to need somebody else to leave me behind. And I feel like in the past, there was a third party. And that what it's taking them some time to be able to like get this relationship back on track. But all in all, you are the person of their dreams. So I was curious, like, again, just for that extra, if we could add on to anything else that we needed, which normally I don't do. Um, but I felt like for those of you that want to take this person back, what was there anything else that you needed to know? And what I feel like is this person is on their way back, like, they don't know where they are in the journey. And now possibly because they're also getting rid of certain people in their life. You know, people that, like I said, they didn't have a lot of friends and a lot of people that supported them. But the ones that they did, they like overgave to. So they needed to set boundaries. And I feel like those boundaries are not really being well received by the people that, again, they're they're uh, changing, you know, they're changing around. And so, you know, part of them, if they're not in a third party, it's just other people in their life that they've identified with, but they don't really like how those people live their life. And so it does take time. And, but like how they know that you're their person is they haven't stopped liking you there again and they they get jealous there's a certain amount of jealousy that i believe is healthy i do it's like it's it says that this person's passionate it's that they you know that they care that you know if they weren't jealous and they were weren't oh and and they stayed away from you for so long and they're not fearful of you meeting someone else again they, they wouldn't come back. I believe that that's a catalyst for them to come back and because they know that you're that person. So that is not saying exactly when they're coming back, but we know that they are. And for those of you that want to be with this person, again, is to focus on, to focus on the beauty of the relationship. Like again, which are the spiritual elements. It's what are you going to learn? how to create balance. I feel like it's there's a lot of potential, a lot of love in this relationship. And I do feel like this person is coming back um, different. But are they 100% healed? No. I believe that you're going to help them do that. And they're going to bring things to their relationship too, because that's how divine relationships are. It just didn't say in this story how this person um, is going to inspire or change you. As you become their muse, we see how you do. Okay, until next time, I'll talk to you then.